I love it when we make it up. <laughs> yeah, so we're making it up today. This is uh, Friday, September 7th, 2012. I'm here with the lovely, ecstatic uh, Melissa Cantrell. I, I am ecstatic. Yep, and uh, we were just... Uh, we were just talking about um, some new products that I've yet to even announce and I keep meaning to and hadn't done it yet, so we'll just do it right now. Yay. So uh, what do you like to talk about first? Oh, give me some of that Jungle Bee Pollen conversation. All right, I, let's I, let, I, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Can you hear those native <laughs> drums? The jungle drums. <laughs> so here's a uh, Jungle Bee Pollen. This, um, this, um, this product, uh, I've been using this for about... Um, better part of a decade now usually I can only get like five or ten pounds I've only been able to get I think five or six pounds twice in the last ten years Wow and so I just never mentioned it to anybody because I was too chintzy to share my stash with anybody else I see have, you, have you guys uh, have you had some of this yeah you last have, time right? we were down there you gave us a little taste I was way impressed it's a um, so, super so, wild tasting. Yeah, so tell tell people um, how uh, bee poll the jungle bee pollen tastes different than uh, normal uh, the domestic bee pollen. Well, first of all, your 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 domestic bee pollen is already darn awesome. Like oh, I'll, yeah. I'll put it in my hand and just like lick it out of my hand. It's so good, um, and use it regularly. Really great for balancing hormones and giving energy. Um, but, and also, man, it's, it's uh, really high in lecithin. I mean, a tablespoon of bee pollen is the equivalent of 20 to 30 egg yolks worth of lecithin. So, yeah, you know, lecithin is, is very instrumental in uh, building uh, collagen and synovial fluid, the liquid joint material between balls and joints. And cool. also for women, uh, their um, uh, uh, female fluids and also men's semen. I mean, that's there's a, I mean, yep. lecithin is a pretty uh, serious health technology and rarely is it ever talked about. It's, isn't it associated with the brain too? I always have lecithin associated yeah, with I the would, brain. I would think so. I would think that uh, because of sort of the, you know, the doctrine of signature says if something looks like something else, it's related. And so if you, right. if you look at lecithin, especially when you mix it with water, um, it reminds me very much of, um, uh, brain tissue and also of um, uh, myelin, the yeah, the nerve myelin sheets teeth coating on your nerves that yeah buffers, buffers the pain. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the your your myelin is the like the insulation uh, that is around the, your nerve bundles. That's what keeps yeah. your nerves from shorting out. So, for example, people with MS, um, uh, most of the time, a contributing factor to MS is um, a um, a microscopic parasite that eats myelin and wow. so you know if you take two high voltage wires and you put them together the the current rather than flowing down the wires you short them and the current flows across the wires and so you get right. heat and light and and everything else downstream is just you know shakes and twitches and you know that's yeah. You know, basically what happens with uh, when your um, myelin deteriorates so that you get a short circuit then you got a short circuit right oh and the and the simple thing about uh, MS is that all you have to do to fix MS and I have never heard a doctor talk about this all you have to do is kill the uh, microscopic parasites right and remyelinate so just, just eat uh, foods um, more, the more lecithin so the remyelinators would be um um sh see we just thought this was a product talk yeah so remyelinators uh would be um uh that i've found that seem to be um very instrumental is the ultra tocos product is probably the most powerful along with enzymes you got to have enzymes as a catalyst to kick everything off so primal digest is the first thing uh ultra tocos cacao butter and coconut oil both seem to be very instrumental uh, probably uh, uh, lecithin too, so uh, bee pollen. Yeah. Um, yeah. In, in other words, don't go to your local store and get you know soy lecithin out of bin. That ain't gonna be. And don't eat egg yolks for God's sake. Pardon my French. Um, you know, there's no no good reason for eating uh, chicken embryos that I know of. 
Um, well, besides, all the things you've just named would make a really tasty raw superfood treat anyway. I oh, mean, yeah. I mean, oh, butter and bee pollen and tocos, a little agave in there. You're set. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, uh, you and I, we were laughing about this here recently. I mean, we pretty much eat dessert all the time. Yeah. You know, what could be better than that? I mean, uh, unless you crave something salty. And it, well, and yeah, and then salty. it's, you know, yeah. Fiesta Mole time or something like that. Yeah. Um, so, um, but th those are the big remyelinators to make sure that you've got, um, well, the sort of the, the sort of the foundation is um, uh, primal digest for your enzymes and then uh, Camu Camu Acerola powder, which we'll talk about here in a minute for vitamin C. Yeah. And um, MSM. Uh, for sulfur, so that that's going to help uh, build up. Uh, that's sort of the 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 um, the 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 MSM is kind of the girders. The sulfur is the girders. The digestive uh, enzymes are kind of the rivets that go in it, <laughs> uh, and the vitamin C are kind of the rivets also. And then the stucco that goes on the outside would be all the, the remyelinators we talked about. Nice. So you have to build a, you know, it's just like building a building. You build a nerve myelin just like you build a building. You have to, you know, you first off you have to build your girders and then you have to cover those over with uh, material just like you're right. building a house or a, a spe specifically a stucco house is a good uh, example. That's Especially good. since it's white and everything too. Yeah, yeah. there you go. That's good. <laughs> That's some good stuff here. So the next product that, um, so the jungle bee pollen is new and uh, I should mention that, um, we have uh, we've got a reserve um, uh, on hand uh, that we've been allocated uh, till it runs out of about 500 pounds, and I'm sure I mean that was back a couple of weeks ago. So I choose to know how many we've been selling this stuff like hotcakes, and I hadn't even announced it. I mean it's just like yeah. people are talking about it. Like you said, some client of yours in New York yeah. said anyway. People are already asking about it. I'm like, how'd you find out about that? I only just barely found out about it myself. What's Which, really interesting about this is that this uh, this bee pollen is harvested from the um, uh, the Amazon uh, jungle, and it it smells and tastes like uh, stargazers and plumerias and all sorts of different lilies. And I mean, it's extremely floral and fragrant. It's just uh, yeah. fantastic. Um, so if you're, if you're making superfood smoothies, it's great. If you're working on like, uh, you know, if you're in a restaurant and working on secret recipes like salad dressings, the I mean, if you'd like a floral um, uh, undertone in a, either a salad dressing or barbecue sauce, this stuff will, it'll drive your, you know, people crazy trying to duplicate. They'll never be able to duplicate the flavor. Yeah. So, or if you're like me and you like to eat it straight yeah, out of just the palm of your it. hand, then you're totally set. I mean, the, the thing that I noticed about it in, in contrast to your regular bee pollen is it has so much more punch, so much more flavor, like oh, a, yeah. a floral punch um, and really wild tasting. Like a lot of the value of raw foods and superfoods is that they have that aliveness and that mm -hmm. wild taste. And this is like even more intensely that taste. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's one of the most uh, intriguing uh, foods I've come across in a long while, and I'm so happy that we have enough that we can. I get to have mine, and we can share. <laughs> I mean, because I I really love sharing our our goodies with people, and yeah. you know, some things that you know, there's just um, uh, a very very limited supply. So another thing is, if you try some jungle bee pollen, you like it. I mean, like I said, um, I've been able to get maybe uh, I think. The last two times I bought in uh, six pounds was the most I could buy, and I've been able to buy six pounds twice in the last 10 years. Wow. So it could be that this is it for, you know, another five years. So, you know, if you like it, be sure and, you know, put up enough that, um, you know, you've got enough for, you know, three or four years and just, you know, put it in your freezer. And what you can do to make this go longer is you can get regular bee pollen, and I've been putting this in my chocolate bliss about... Um, Splitting it about half and half, doing like a, a couple of tablespoons of jungle bee pollen and a couple of tablespoons of um, domestic bee pollen in every gallon of uh, chocolate bliss. It's just outrageously good. Mm. Awesome. Speaking yeah, of stuff. We regularly put bee pollen in okay. our chocolate bliss. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to getting some of that jungle bee pollen. Yeah, baby. Okay, so number two. Yeah. Is... Um, have you have you guys seen the the? Oh, good! You finally doing your own vitamin C. Yeah. Yay. So um, uh, we have. Um, I mean, we we have to buy uh, camu camu and acerola powder in huge quantities. 
uh, to be able to you know have on hand for uh, chocolate bliss because chocolate uh, you know regardless of what a lot of uh, less than correctly informed raw foodists tell you there ain't a trace of vitamin C in chocolate. I've seen all sorts of, oh yeah, it's a great source of vitamin C. I've never tested any chocolate had a trace of vitamin C. No. And it's very easy to see that because in the jungle, Camu Camu and some other high uh, rich vitamin C products grow right next to cacao bushes. So, you know, again, the, the doctrine of, um, there's another, like, it's not the doctrine of signatures, but it's the idea of, like, uh, the, the, op plants grown the together. opposite or complementary plants always grow next to each other. So, like, anytime you see, like, poison ivy or oak or sumac, you'll find very close to it plantain because that's the antidote. Right. Um, and so, along with uh, cacao, you'll always find things like uh, vanilla and uh, camu growing fairly close and a few other things that um, uh, I mean there's all sorts of really interesting things growing in the Amazon so the second thing is we're calling it uh, primal C awesome so um, it's just half and half uh, camu camu and uh, acerola powder and this is the the same um, camu and acerola that we use in chocolate bliss that's um, is processed with manioc roots so it basically um, if you take vitamin C, uh, a camu camu plant, and you break the the berry, the vitamin mm -hmm. C uh, just it's destroyed within a few minutes. By processing it with uh, manioc root, which again grows right beside the camu camu plant in the jungle, then yeah. what you end up with. Uh, the last time I talked with the the lab that uh, produces this for us. Um, they said that they were coming up on something like three years where they had some of this just set out in open air. They had they had a dish of it and a, a glass container set over it. And they said, yeah, every few months we go and open the dish and take out some and test it. And he said, we're up to three years and, and hadn't seen any drop in vitamin C uh, content. Wow. So and that's because it was mixed with the manioc root. Pardon me? That's because it was mixed with the manioc. Yeah, it, it's processed. With, it's a proprietary process. They won't even tell us how they do it, and I really could care less. I'm just glad they do it. Not, you know, it, so it's one less thing I got to figure it out. Right. Um, so, um, uh, but that's the uh, when they test the vitamin C efficacy is what they're testing to see. You know, is is the vitamin C still active? And so, basically, what manioc root does does is it's like a it's like um, wrapping each uh, particle of camu camu berry in glass so that it no longer oxidizes because that right. that's what happens is uh, camu camu tends to oxidize really really rapidly yep. so that's number two and, and what about the acerola berry um oh. is that add extra vitamin c yeah so acerola is uh, acerola cherry is a bitter cherry uh, and acerola and camu camu are both what are um um, uh, they're they're both what are called long chain polysaccharides. In other words, they're very long chain sugars that have uh, been arranged in such a long chain that they become bitter. Mm. And so, because they're um, long chain sugars, they're very very easy for your body to break down. And as they break down, the vitamin C releases. And acerola is a very, very good complement to camu camu, and it's also wrapped in manioc root. Cool. So it, it's um, uh, it's one of the things I've been thinking about for years and years, and we just finally um, um, uh, got our guys to start packaging it. So. And can you take that powder and just like mix it in water and have like a berry flavored drink? Yeah, in fact, it's really good. I mean, you can make some, uh, like for example, if I was doing a, a, a um, what's that thing called? The really evil uh, master cleanse. I oh, apologize, yeah. evil. So for master cleanse, instead of using uh, burnt maple syrup and um, uh, what else do they use? Uh, Lemon juice and cayenne. Lemon juice and cayenne. Yeah. So, so yeah. to to if I was going to make a uh, master cleanse, I would use. I'd probably still use uh, lemon and maybe a little bit of orange or grape. Uh, probably better grapefruit. Sour mm -hmm. citrus is always better than sweet. So my my version of uh, master cleanse would be uh, grapefruit juice and lemon juice and lime juice. So you got all three sour citrus and some of the camu camu. Uh -huh. uh, and instead of um, uh, maple syrup, I'd use vanilla agape so that you get the vanilla flavonoids because they're really powerful. 
and sunfire salt to boost the uh, mineral content up. Yep. And uh, what? Oh, and cayenne. Yeah, I'd, yep. I'd uh, definitely leave the cayenne in there too. Awesome. Yep. Sounds a little bit like a lemonade we've been making a lot lately that has all that plus some MSM in there. Yep. Good. So, oh yeah, and MSM would be a really good uh, thing to put in there too because the MSM yep. along with the camu. In fact, that would be a really cool thing is to come up with a um, uh, master cleanse alternative recipe. And, and you don't have to have it just as a cleanse. We actually, we were uh, hiking in Colorado in high altitude and we were drinking a lemonade um, mm -hmm. with the MSM, a pinch of uh, the sunflower salt, vanilla agave nectar, uh, lemon juice water. I think that was about it that was in it. Um, and it, we had no altitude sickness whatsoever. Yeah, and in fact, the other thing I'd put in there, and this is, I mean, we're getting really close to the recipe that I use for um, uh, high performance athletes that we work with. Yeah. Then the other thing I'd put in here is the um, the third product here oh, is uh, blue green algae, which we've been selling for years now, and I've never even announced it. Um, and I I uh, deferred in announcing it because we had it in such small quantities to begin with. And um, the way you can tell blue green algae is really good is I choose to know if you can. If yeah, you it looks nice and flaky. That's well, what beautiful. you can do is if you can, can see that color, that sheen. Most blue-green algae, like if you take uh, blue-green algae capsules, which I wouldn't recommend you ever eat, and open those up, they uh, most of them look like the um, pea, the the peas you get in the the cafeteria when you're young, right? Sorry, say that again. Oh, uh, but usually when you open up. Um, uh, the capsules of blue green algae that you buy different places, especially with uh, through MLMs, the uh, the powder is a washed out pea green. Mm. And so what you're looking for is, it. pardon me, it doesn't have any blue in it. Yeah, well, what you're looking for, it doesn't have any color in it. It's all washed out, and that's because it's it's been frozen and burnt and twisted in all sorts of ways that are you know unconscionable. And so uh, what you're looking for is uh, blue-green algae that pops. If you put this in the sunlight, you'll be mesmerized by all the different uh, iridescent uh, blues and greens that will pop out. Nice. And so that's the other thing that I would mix in my uh, master cleanse. And so the interesting thing about blue-green algae is it's the only substance um, that I know of that will pass the blood-brain barrier intact. It passes the intestinal wall barrier intact. It also passes the placenta intact. Wow, and, and what you know, does that mean when it's intact? Like that means you're getting that all the, the, the molecular structure is intact instead of being broken down into simpler compounds. And again, it's like camu, camu. It's a long chain polysaccharide, or it's um, it's arranged in a long a long chain polysaccharide package. It's very different than spirulina or um, chlorella, both of which have to be cracked with chemicals and heat to release the nutrients. Right. So, um, and and that's the reason you have to do that is because the the, um, the 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 plant wall, the wall, the cellular wall of those uh, substances is uh, a really tough uh, cellulose uh, plant fiber, mm -hmm. and you and most humans just are unable to digest it. Yeah. And the blue green algae, on the other hand, which uh, with the name of this product, whoop, I'm doing a little juggling act there. Uh, yeah. We named this uh, Primal AFA Green because, um, you know, blue-green algae is one of the most primeval, primordial foods on the planet. Um, so um, the, the interesting thing about um, uh, blue-green algae is that uh, it's a long-chain uh, polysaccharide, so that means that it, uh, it's very easy to break down. You can digest it because your body is built to break sugars apart and carbohydrates. And so blue-green algae, basically, it'll circulate around your bloodstream for six to eight hours intact, and your body will shave off of that uh, material essential sugars and chelates or uh, 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 bonding of um, amino acids and minerals have to be chelated or bonded together to be useful. You can't use an <laughs> amino acid without a mineral. You can't use a mineral without an amino acid. So if you take, for example, amino acid supplements, that means you're going to have to leach minerals out of your bones usually. Or if you take mineral supplements, the, the, you'll either 
you know, urinate them out or, or eliminate them in some way, or your body will have to, uh, you know, hit your um, uh, liver to produce amino acids to bond with those. So either way, it takes a huge amount of resource for nothing. Just, you know, eat real food. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, ain't no, the only cure for crazy fad diets is real food, right? If you like to use, lose weight, the, all it takes is uh, correct nutrition and hydration and you're done. Yeah. Uh, tell, tell us about the, the flakes versus, you know, some of the other blue-green algae products I've seen on the market are powders powder. or liquid. Yeah, well, I mean, the liquids uh, are fine, and, you know, you'll pay, you know, hundreds to thousands of times more because, oh, uh, another thing I should mention, too, is the price on this changes because, like, if you if you notice how fluffy this is, these are uh, containers have 170 grams, and depending on the cut of the flake, uh, sometimes we have to put as little as 150, and sometimes we can get up to 200. So we just fill these as best we can and just arrange, you know, change the price based on the gram weight. Right. Um, so the liquid basically, you know, if you take um, uh, blue-green algae and mix it up with water, then it takes way less blue-green algae. Uh, you get your own and mix it with water, right? Way, way right. cheaper to, to buy a, a container of flakes like this than um, the, um, you know, uh, liquid. And the, yeah, the, and the freshness will be the same versus, with flakes versus the liquid? Pardon me? The freshness will be the same? Oh, well, actually, the it's probably going to be much fresher in a flake form than uh, liquid, mm. I would guess, depending on how the liquid's processed. And um, See, the challenge is, you know, people will tell you, well, it's in, it's in liquid, so it's underwater, so it won't oxidize, and it's in glass, so it won't oxidize. Problem is, what they hadn't talked about was how it was processed before it got into the liquid, and how right. how long that liquid was moving around, and what the surface area was. Like if you if you take a, a ten gallon container of liquid, the only surface area is the top. If you take that ten pound that ten gallons of liquid and screwed it out over a flat surface, then you've got an ox you've got a whole plane of oxidation. Right. And my preference is just, you know, give me the give me the whole flakes. Yeah. And we're only one of two companies that has a license with the the, the uh, uh, harvester out at Klamath Lake that uh, pulls this out and um, does ambient air uh, uh, low. Well, it's it's ambient air uh, blow drying of the algae to um, turn it into powder. Cool. Which is why it's flakes instead. You know, it's not. Uh, if it's if it's like a powder, um, I guess I should use the word flakes because a powder means it's been ground, so you're probably going to have even more oxidation that way. Mm. Which is another thing about liquid, you know, the way that those liquids are usually made is they first grind the flakes into powder, which means the powder is heated, and it's got more surface area to oxidize. So now, you know, you're back into the situation where you've got the challenge of um, extreme oxidation. Right. Well, and the, the other cool thing about the flakes is you can sprinkle it on a salad and, like, have it be part of your salad dressing. So oh, much you yeah. Can work so, with. Yeah, I mean, you can use, um, uh, I, I usually put um, a tablespoon of this in a gallon of Chocolate Bliss right now is what one of the things I'm right. doing. And it, it uh, gives it a more silky flavor and also adds in all sorts of uh, additional amino acids that are missing from cacao. Nice. Uh, and because the MS or the yep. the um, camu camus in there, then all the vitamin C is available to metabolize the amino acids. So it's a it's a really good um, uh, combination there. Awesome. So that's number three. Number four. So let's see. There's we, more. We did. Holy bee moly! Pollen. You can bee pollen is number one. Camu camu is number two. Uh, Prime LFA greens number three. Dulse is number four. Yay! Yeah. Yay. Happy to have dulse back. So. Oh, it smells good. So our dulse pipeline, we've um, we messed around that with that for probably about a year until we got everything. Uh, it seems to be running smooth as a top now, and we have um, access to dulse on a regular basis. So um, at least yeah. we do right now. So again, you know, yeah. dulse is one of those. I mean, this is the ultimate survival food. It's high protein. It's high iodine. So it will both. Uh, uh, clean up and protect against radiation. So, you know, if you think the end of the world is near, um, I mean, we usually keep about 100 pounds of this on hand in our own food storage. Because this yeah. is like, you know, if you have dulse and salt in your food storage, you can you can go a long time without anything else. 
Yeah. Because you, know, you can scavenge the other things around you. So. Well, and the other thing I like about dulcet is particularly in the wintertime, we snack on it regularly just as a, a warming, dry food to balance all the wet and cool foods that often comes with raw foods. Yep. It's yep. a good snack. Good stuff. And then the final thing, which I have no mock-up of or actual packaging of, we just um, uh, finished up the uh, recipe testing, um, and we'll be um, uh, probably starting to ship this product. Uh, let's see. This is uh, today's Friday, probably uh, around September the let's see uh 17th or so which is a monday and the the, the new product's going to be uh jungle fudge chocolate bliss chocolate fudge jungle fudge oh my so it's going to have jungle bee pollen and it'll have a little bit of uh, uh guarana in it uh enough to add the flavor components of guarana and uh also uh blue green algae Mm. And also, you know, if you have challenges with uh, Gron or you think that it's a stimulant, uh, I did a recording with a, a buddy of mine last night that I'm going to publish hopefully sometime today that's called, um, it's going to be called uh, Curing the Candy Bar Effect. And we go into quite a, a bit of detail about uh, Gron on that. And also, I published a another video here a few days ago that is called... Let's see what that is called. Do, 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 do. Oh no, don't don't start playing. Stop it. Uh, let's <laughs> see. Um, Okay, uh, the name of this other video, which I published just a few days ago, is called Guarana Pricing and Evils. That's one you just posted, right? Yeah, I just posted that uh, a couple of days ago. I haven't even announced it yet. Also, there's another one I posted yesterday called uh, Reversing Leukemia the Easy Way, which is really interesting. Uh, yeah, there's you a couple a of great lately. We haven't caught up with you yet. Yeah, there's a couple of great... Oh, I also published, I uh, republished this morning a... Um, a recording from 2010 I did with the uh, internet marketer and the the abs king guy John Benson where we were rapping about salt and fasting and rapid weight loss nice so and also there's a couple of really interesting interviews with uh, Beate Chilet and uh, Sherry Strong where I'm kind of uh, introducing them to our community and uh, so good stuff uh, oh and uh, the video channel is just um, uh, either Radical Health or InsideTrackParty.com, each one, either one of those domains slash videos. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, I know we want to talk a little more about um, the our just change our conversation around uh, blood pressure and caffeine and all that. Yeah, My we'll, sound we'll is kind of breaking up, up a, a little let's, bit. Uh, let's wrap up on uh, products and we'll do a separate yeah. video for that. Great. So uh, anything else about uh, product stuff that you'd like to talk about or pass along or whatever? I, I think all your products sound great. I'm excited to get them in stock and use them. Cool. Yeah, we've been ever since we tasted the jungle bee pollen, we've been wanting more. So. Oh, yep. Well, yeah, uh, we've got, um, mm, I think, a couple of hundred units on hand. So just get in touch with uh, Aaron. You can get a hold of that. We'll, we'll take some off your hands. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, I'll, I will wrap this video up and then move on to the next one. Great.